Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life channel. This is another weekly channeled conversation with a famous, well-known person from the afterlife. And today's guest is a comedian that you will recognize from some very famous sitcoms. We have with us today act Mr. actor, Mr. John Ritter. And Welcome, John. It's nice to have you here. Um, we had spoke briefly this weekend when you kind of popped in to my frame of reference and my humanity as I was in a hotel and I was flipping through the channels and came across some reruns of Three's Company. And so I did watch a bit and enjoyed that blast from the past for me. Like I grew up on the reruns. So I know you as Jack Tripper and so that's my that's how I enter into our channel today and so he just kind of smiles he's, he's real polite and I know that so a few things I know about you I know you died of a heart attack and I know you died when you were actually in the process of uh, filming or being part of a sitcom you were in you were working like you had uh, uh, a series that was going well, a TV show that was going well. And so I'm not really sure um, the circumstances around your transition. And uh, I'd like to talk about that just a little bit. I want to get your um, insight into the afterlife and what it felt like to you to transition. Um, but I also want to just acknowledge that um, so first of all, I see John is showing up as a, like a 50 something, I would say 52 Mm, seems a little too young. I'm thinking closer to 55 in the age range. Um, he's broader. He's a little more filled out than his Jack Tripper days, but aren't we all, right? A little more filled out, a little more um, weight in the middle section of the body, and um, a very kind face is how I would describe him. He has a wonderful smile, very warm smile. His energy, I hope you can feel it. So, uh, John, if you could just... Um, acknowledge or recognize that the audience, whoever is watching this video, can feel and sense your energy. And so the, he's literally beaming, like he just feels very generous, like very giving, and he feels positive. He feels um, kind, like he would help you out. He feels a bit like a mentor, like someone that you could look up to. He feels like a pretty good guy, actually. and like someone you could trust, you know? And I just, I want to acknowledge that. Like, I feel like I could lean on you, rely on you, kind of a thing. All right, so um, other than that, I don't know anything about you. So I'm looking forward to connecting and sharing with you, or sharing with the, getting to know you in the afterlife and sharing with the viewers of Above Life channel. Okay, so first let's start off with the transition question. This is a question I've tried to incorporate into many of the conversations that I've been having with spirits because it's important for us as humans to understand, to get a perspective. And we recognize at this point that it is unique to individuals, the way that we cross over, the way that we shift from being our matter in our human bodies and slide into the embodiment of our full spirit. And so if you could, could you, would you mind starting there and talking a little bit about that for you, that process for you? What was it like for you, the moment of your transition into the afterlife? And he kind of turns his head and he thinks, he's like, that's a serious question for a comedian. <laughs> and he consider so you consider yourself a comedian yes yes definitely yes definitely I think the body of work that I've done uh, my legacy is, is um, right up in the Tim Allen um, you know like the home improvement show that's what he's kind of comparing to um, that it's right up in that kind of energy genre um, that there is most certainly there have been other opportunities as well in my career, but having a successful show was really a high point of my life. It really felt good. Now, are you talking about Three's Company? Or are you talking about the most recent one? And it's something about my dad, and I can't see it. 
He, I know he plays a father, but I can't see the full name of it. It's like four words or something. I'm not sure, something about a father. Um, <clears throat> so at the time of your passing, can you talk about that a little bit? He said it was like that, like boom, one minute I'm here, the next minute I'm not here. Um, he says he's expressing not feeling well. He's um, He wants to strongly encourage people to know what the signs are for a heart attack and to know what the symptoms are, you know, the numbness in the arms. He's saying the flu-like symptoms, feeling sick to your stomach. He's saying um, he had some of that. He had experienced some of that. Um, he was on blood, it looks like he was on blood pressure medicine or something for blood pressure, high blood pressure or blood pressure or something. He was talking about, he's talking about blood pressure and I feel like he was on some kind of medication for that. So I feel like he was kind of aware um, that he was he was uh, health conscious in that way. Like he knew that not, I don't think the heart thing was an awareness though. I don't know if it ran in the family or not. I think it was kind of a shock actually. To him, it was a surprise. And he's saying, I didn't feel old. I didn't feel old. He said, I felt like I was, you know, uh, still young. Like I had, I had the whole, my whole life ahead of me. He said, I never felt really, I never really felt old. And, and he's saying, I'm not saying that I felt invincible, <laughs> but he's like kind of laughing. He's like, but I'm, in mo I'm immortal now. I'm immortal now, you know? And, um, but he's talking about know the signs of heart attack. You've got to know the signs. He's saying it's really important, like a PSA, All right? Thank you for that. Very good, all right. So he definitely died of a heart attack. And he said it was really fast. So how did it feel in your body? Kind of, he says it's kind of like a squeezing. Um, it wasn't a struggle or a suffer, suffering, he says. I wasn't feeling well. Like, you know, when you get sick, if you have the flu. Kind of, he explained to me kind of like when it gets really hot and you have like a heat exhaustion or almost like a heat stroke, like a heat exhaustion where you just, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't feel well. Yeah, yeah, that's how he's explaining it, like that. So you lay down and don't feel well or whatever. You're not feeling great. And you're trying to kind of push through and get things done. And I, I feel like I don't, like a squeezing, like almost like a twisting inside, like it's twisting. Like it twists and then boop, like um, he's trying to say like, um, like, oh. Great. This is a beautiful analogy. This is how Mr. John Ritter is describing his transition into the afterlife. Like a bottle of champagne that you popped up and you pop the top off and it just, bing, it goes flying and the boom, you know, and the bubbles and everything goes everywhere. That's what it feels like, he says. So the spirit just shoots out of the body, he said, like the cork on the champagne. He says, it isn't that kind of how it should be. He said, so it was only like a moment of discomfort, a moment of like tensions, like twisting or like a little yeah, squeezing and then boop, off, gone. And he's saying, I attribute that. I attribute that moment, that feeling to the moment of letting go, trying to hold on to the last bits of life, of the human life. And then once you let go, there's just this big rush and release and he's saying very clearly, I'm not saying it feels good to die. I'm not saying it doesn't feel good to be spirit either. I'm not recommending it for anyone. You know, when it's your time, it's your time. Oh, interesting. Do you really feel that way? Did you feel that way? Did you feel like it was your time? No, no. I felt like I was not even 30. I felt like I had my whole career ahead of me, my whole life ahead of me, you know? And he's talking about having a daughter that was in college. I think he had two daughters or two girls that felt like daughters. Two girls, I think he has two daughters. He's saying something, my daughter in college and somebody just graduating high school or something, somebody just, okay, so one daughter like in college and then another daughter and either there are his daughters or they feel like daughters. I don't know if, I, if he's referring to people on the show because I, because I don't know, I didn't watch the show. I don't even know what the name of the show is. Um, but the second one, was had also just had a life moment, like a milestone life moment. So it was either like I got my driver's license or I graduated from high school 
that kind of thing, like a life moment like that. Um, he's telling me he was a grandpa, like he had gr our grandbaby, grandkids, I think it's plural. There's a boy for sure, a little boy. I think he had grandkids. Okay. Um, and then, he, oh, maybe stepkids. It looks like he was remarried. Married and divorced twice, at least twice, maybe three. But it's tricky because I think he's counting his TV wives. <laughs> I don't know how many TV wives you've had. I don't know other sitcoms you've been on or other shows you've been on. Um, besides the Three's Company. Oh, then there was like a spinoff. And then there was a spinoff of Three's Company. I can't remember the name of that one. But then there was also like, uh, then there was the most recent one. So maybe he's referring to his TV wives too. Um, he's talking about having a close knit group, a crew. Um, he wants to say something about that. The crew on the television show that he was on when he died, really close knit. And he said, we, it was just, it was great. It was a great energy. It was really great energy. And he said, just a really good, he said a really good group of people. And he's referring to young actresses or young actors. And there, it looks like there is a boy and there, again, two girls I see. I wonder if the two girls are the ones that actual real daughters or TV daughters. He, um, he really treats everyone like family, like they're close. Like it feels really, um, it feels close knit, be it the, what I would describe. And he says, very talented young actors, very talented, good work ethic, just good kids. He says, good kids, you know, and I feel like they, like all this and this huge feeling of grief comes over me. Like I feel them being so sad for his passing. He says, I, he said, he said, I know, I know it was painful. I know it was painful for them. You know, and I'm not sure about the details about your your transition, your death. I'm kind of now psychically I'm seeing it almost literally almost looks like you were on set and you you know, had your heart attack or you weren't feeling well. Um I'm not sure if that was the point of the crossing of, or and then it looks like going to the hospital and then that's where the um, it was is confirmed that you died, but I don't know if you had the heart attack on set or if you started having the symptoms on set, but I feel like it was on a filming day. Is that correct? Yes, it was. Yes. Okay. Because I almost get the impression that he died on set, but I don't know the exact sequence of events. It's super hard. I am just, Bridget is not good with the calendar and the time and the translation of energy time. I'm, I've not been good at that. I'm working on it, people, I'm working on it. But I'm feeling like it was a filming day and it was either he started to get sick, had symptoms, um, maybe went home even and didn't feel well and then um, had the, the actual heart attack full onset. Um, but I do see him going to the hospital and then being pronounced dead at the hospital. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and I see him in Los Angeles in California. I see that as a part of his life that he really um, is connected to. He felt like he was in L.A. young. I don't know if he went out as a young actor, like 18, 19, 20, really young. He talked to me about making a go of college, trying to go to college and be in the theater. Um, but And he's talking about how his parents wanted him to be an accountant. Could you imagine me as your accountant? He says, can you imagine me doing your taxes? Kind of a thing. Um, could to be a metaphor? It might literally, not literally mean that his parents wanted him to be an accountant, but you know, his parents wanted him to pursue, um, have something to fall back on, have something that would be able to support him. And it looks like he went to community college or college for a couple of years, but I don't know that he graduated. I can't see that. Um, and I can see him doing comedy in clubs. And then I can see him going to lots of auditions and being in a commercial or two. Um, I can really see him as being like a young actor, like just trying to make it, trying to make it. Um, I see a question of New York. Um, I kind of see him on a, like a stage, like being in a show, like a play or something. Um, I can see that. I was thinking about movies and I don't really see you in movies. If it was in a movie, it might have been like a supporting role or like a small, much smaller part or role or could have been early on even as an extra. Um, he's saying something about a soap opera. Like he may have had a walk on on a soap opera. He could have been the waiter or something. Um, he's talking about that. And you know, like daytime TV. 
bringing them their drinks or whatever. Uh, so I see that, but I see California like Santa Monica. I see that. And like the ocean, I see that. Santa Monica or Santa Barbara. I'm not sure. Palm Springs. I see California. I definitely see California. All right. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to specifically ask you about. Ooh, ooh. Um, do you have advice about life? What advice about being a person would you give to us? Hmm. So he's thinking for a moment. There's a lot of information he'd like to share, I think. Like there's a lot of things he, I can instantly think about it, like a spinning the wheel to pick one. Um, he feels like fatherly, like a dad giving advice. And he, he's just saying, he's saying, do your best. You've got to just do your best, you know? And he's talking about some days it's hard to work hard, but you've got to do what you can. He's like, those are the days that really make you. They really make you. And he's saying about actors or people who are interested in, you know, making it big in Hollywood or whether it's being on stage or being in movies or in television shows. And he's like, there's so many opportunities now with Netflix and YouTube streaming. And there's just, there's so many different um, independent things that you can do. He's saying there's a lot of opportunity, a lot more opportunity than you, than you may think there is. But don't, it might not be the traditional method. He's like, you've got to let yourself be creative. As an actor, that's one thing that, really will help you. It will boost you up. It will help you to stand out, he said. And you don't have to walk over people or stab people in the back. You don't have to be ruthless to be successful in Hollywood. You don't have to be ruthless to be a good actor. And he's just saying, work, you know, work, do work. Um, don't, he's like saying, no job is too little. No job is too little. He said, mm -hmm. and he's talking about enjoying the moments, you know, when you get a role or you're in a situation where there's just a great team of actors or a great, a great plot or storyline or a good, good play and you get to be in it, it doesn't matter what role you're in. There are no small, small roles. You just make the best of it, enjoy it, savor it. He's like like a steak, you know, just really savor it, cut into it, and just savor every bite, every moment. Just savor it, savor it. Great. He says, and tell them to check for the signs of heart attack because that he's, he's saying that's serious. That is serious. And he's saying my death could have been um, prolonged or he said he's not saying um, he's kind of saying that the heart thing would have got him eventually he said but it didn't have to be then it could have been five years ten years twenty years thirty years later he's saying could have been I could have been 80 he said instead of you know in my 50s and so that from that perspective you gotta take care of your health. And he's saying, learn the signs of heart attack. Learn the signs. Especially if you have it in your family, heart disease in your family, he's saying. All right. Thank you, Mr. John Ritter. It was a pleasure to speak with you. We appreciate it very, very much. If you have questions or comments for Mr. John Ritter or would like to hear from some other um, well-known people, go ahead and put that in the comments below. As always at Above Life Channel, the goal is to inspire your spirit, to fill you up with hope. Remember, it's your life, so live it. Thanks for being here.